Hey, let's talk about the valley of the shadow of death, about uh, the potential overuse of the word good in the church. And hey, let's throw in top 40 charts while we're at it. Today, in this installment of Songs We Pray, we're gonna be taking a look at Goodness of God from Bethel Music's 2019 release, Victory. This is one of the newer songs in our songbook, uh, only having introduced it uh, a few weeks ago, but it carries both a timely and a timeless message for us, helping us acknowledge God's goodness, even when things don't seem particularly good. That's something that we'll come back to. But first, real quick, uh, before we dive into the meaning of the song, I'd like to take just a moment to point out that we are uh, six weeks into this video series. And we have talked about one old song and five new songs. And of those five songs, uh, they have each been written and released by different worship ministries. There's no repeats yet, although stay tuned. One of the values that we as a church have is to sort of spread the load in terms of worship resources, to not over identify with any one particular worship ministry, since they each have their own strengths, yes, uh, and they might also have their own challenges. The church does not rise or fall on any one particular expression of the Christian faith, on any one particular Christian leader, or on any one particular set of top 40 songs. Now, back to the song at hand. Personally, I love the laid back and yet really encouraging feel of this song. It's very singable, and the verses seem like they're sort of a pastiche of just a, a load of different psalms. Uh, but the part that I would like to take a look at today in particular is the bridge. The sort of main line is, your goodness is running after me. Psalm 23 is probably one of the most well-known passages of the Bible. The song opens with, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. You've no doubt heard that. And it ends like, surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this idea that the shepherd is so concerned for the, the well-being of the sheep that he would, he would actually follow after or run after them is taken up in the New Testament by Jesus in one of his most famous parables. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me for I have found my lost sheep. In the words of the Gospel of John, this is not just a shepherd, this is a good shepherd. The good shepherd. Now some corners of the church, and here I don't mean Moncton Wesleyan Church, but like the, the global and historical church. Some corners of the church tend to view other corners of the church with a little bit of suspicion for maybe overusing or overemphasizing the, the goodness of God. And honestly, they might be right to a certain extent. Yes, God is good and he is holy and he is righteous and he is almighty and all-knowing and all-present. Yes, he hates sin. Yes, he is our judge and none of those things make him not good. They are expressions of his goodness. God's goodness is not some sort of like weak or impactless pleasantness. He is not a good cup of tea. He is a good God. He is good and he is good for us, regardless of how we may feel about that goodness. There are some Psalms that David wrote that we can kind of uh, timestamp into his biography. As far as I know, Psalm 23 is not one of them. We can't say with much confidence whether he wrote this after a great victory, like when he defeated Goliath, or after a great loss, like when he became aware that his own son had betrayed him. Whether it was written when he was young or when he was old. And because of this, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to say something like, well, it's easy for the young, victorious David to say that God is good, but 
stick around, we'll see how he feels in the end. But the truth is that David, he never really had an easy life. Shepherds did not have easy lives. He had to deal with not only very unpleasant conditions, but I mean, he also had to fight off ravenous wildlife like lions and bears. Plus, he was apparently the runt of the litter, and his older brothers were not exactly treating him with respect. There was no point where David's life was perfect, where he could, where he could assert God's goodness based upon an absence of pain or some sort of presence of limitless resources. But if David spoke modern English, I could picture him singing words like these, regardless of his age or stage. Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. You have led me through the fire. I have lived in the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me. Church, the challenge is to be able to pray those words when we lie down in green pastures, as well as when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. To know, to really know, not just with our heads, but with our hearts, that his goodness is not tied to our circumstances. That challenge becomes less challenging through practice. When we regularly acknowledge his goodness in all things, through seasonal, weekly, and daily patterns, it, it shapes our perspective and helps us to better see his goodness at work through all things so that we can come to the place where we can honestly see and honestly say with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God.